Hey everyone, today we're going to talk about predators. Not that kind. I'm talking about the ones at the top of the food chain. The big shots. The apex. I'm talking about you guys. Humans. You're doing great. I like you. In fact, when it comes to dominant apex predators, you guys are easily in my top eight. Wait, what? You guys think you're number one? Why would you? Because of the internet. Have you seen what's... Never mind. As shocking as it may seem, human beings are not the greatest predator to call this planet their home. Nope. That award goes to my favorite dinosaur, the Mosasaur. What? I still can't. It's not a dinosaur. That's right, folks. This isn't a dinosaur. It's a marine reptile. What's a marine reptile? Marine reptiles are like whales and dolphins. About 50 million years ago, some mammals decided that they were done with the whole walking on land thing and returned to the Earth's oceans, where, over the course of millions of years, they slowly adapted to marine life. But millions of years before our mammalian brothers took to the sea, Mesozoic reptiles had already made the transition. These were not crocs, who spent part of their time on land. These reptiles had fully transitioned to marine life, taking traits from their reptilian ancestors as well as adapting new ones that would help them dominate the Earth's oceans for millions of years. And the king of these aquatic reptiles was none other than the Mosasaur, a fierce predator that came to dominance during the late Cretaceous. Wait, how does a fish lizard come out ahead of mankind? I mean, you guys are the pinnacle of design. You walk upright. You've got big brains. The tendons in your knees are too small to support you walking upright, ensuring many of you will one day have knee problems. Okay, so maybe there's a few flaws. But has any other creature come to dominate the food chain with the same prominence and glory as mankind? Well, yes, actually. Have you seen Shark Week? They killed Shaq! When it comes to land, it's no contest. You guys are killing it. No question. Seriously, though, some of you guys are actually killing the land. Please, stop. However, even with your impressive track record on land, that's still only 30% of the planet. The other 70% is made up of vast oceans. Where this happens? Wait a second. You keep showing videos of sharks. How come this video isn't about them? Because Shark Week is in June. But also, while sharks are apex predators, they do have some competition. Now don't get me wrong. Sharks are very dominant, and they have an impressive track record. But that wasn't always the case, especially in the Mesozoic where they had more competition. During the late Cretaceous period, the Earth was much warmer. These warmer temperatures melted the polar ice caps and raised the Earth's oceans causing 82% of the planet to be covered by water. This created the perfect environment for oceanic super predators, creatures like the long-necked plesiosaur and its shorter neck cousin, the pliosaur, as well as Ginsu sharks and giant reptilian dolphins known as ichthyosaurs. And of course, the most dominant of all, the mosasaur, a creature that showed up at the tail end of the Cretaceous and quickly came to command the Earth's oceans. What about that creature I saw on Walking with Dinosaurs? Surely he. You mean this guy? Ah, yes. Liopleurodon. Here he is. Television lies, kids. But wait, what about Megalodon? Well, Megalodon certainly was bigger. However, Megalodon's competition was much more similar to what we see today, fitting on creatures like sperm whales and giant squid. Nothing like the Royal Rumble of the Mesozoic era. However, I want to be clear. We are not throwing these creatures into the octagon and having them battle it out. This is a popularity contest. The question of who would win in a fight would depend greatly on their environment, how we judge them, and how I decide to animate them. At the end of the day, these are all super predators that fit specific niches in their environment and their time. But the Mosasaur is the best. Here's why. I want you to forget everything you know about these creatures. Hollywood loves to portray them as crocodilian monsters. But these creatures are so much cooler than the aquatic monsters you see on the big screen. Instead of picturing them as these giant leviathans, think of them as reptilian whales. When you think of whales, what's the first thing you think of? Okay, fair enough. You also probably think of things like sonar, live birth, and creative hunting strategies. These are all traits common to the Mosasaur. As mentioned earlier, whales and dolphins evolved from land-dwelling mammals, taking with them features they had developed for life on land and over millions of years adapting them to life in the ocean. Features like their inner ear, which was designed to help them hear and balance on land, were adapted to aquatic life, most famously helping whales and dolphins use sonar to hunt and communicate. 
Just like whales, mosasaur also would have had an inner ear that it could use to detect vibrations. The skull of mosasaur was covered in tiny sensory glands that concentrated at the snout. These tightly packed nerves were used for detecting changes in pressure. This allowed the mosasaur to sense the pressure waves coming off of their prey, similar to how modern day whales use echolocation to navigate their environment. But this wasn't the only ancestral trait the mosasaur would adapt to aquatic life. What's the first thing that comes to your mind when you think about reptiles? I should stop asking that. Hopefully some of you thought of this, that forked tongue. Similar to its predecessors, who we believe to be monitor lizards and snakes, the mosasaur likely would have had a forked tongue. This tongue would have allowed the mosasaur to smell in multiple directions over vast distances which when combined with the ability to sense changes in pressure, it helped the mosasaur easily hunt for food, even in the murky waters of the Cretaceous. This is what's so cool about the mosasaur. It took parts of its reptilian lineage and turned them into super weapons. Take a look at this snake scarfing down an egg. The snake is able to do this thanks to its double hinged jaw. As the snake opens its mouth, the bottom jaw can dislocate and pull apart, allowing it to swallow larger prey. Then, while eating it, a second set of teeth in the back of the mouth act as a conveyor belt, pulling in their food. And wouldn't you know it, the mosasaur had it too. While it wasn't able to dislocate its jaw to the same degree a snake could, it was able to open its jaw to an impressive degree. With the help of its kinetic jaw, the mosasaur would use its second set of teeth to trap prey, pulling them in. This allowed the mosasaur to take larger bites and tackle larger prey. But the mosasaur didn't only rely on its reptilian lineage. They also adapted several new traits that would help make them ferocious predators. Unlike snakes and crocodiles who use a side-to-side -side motion to swim through the water, the mosasaur adapted a strong body with a flexible tail. This tail would have had a large fluke at the bottom, helping the mosasaur accelerate and take tight turns. In fact, you know what? Here. This is what their tails would have looked like just like an upside down shark. This style of movement and transportation was in stark contrast to the way the other marine reptiles moved. Animals like the plesiosaur relied on their limbs to propel them through the water, similar to modern day turtles. Compare that to the mosasaur, who moved more like a shark, using their tail as a propulsion system to gain a burst of speed, ambushing their prey from the murky depths. In addition to being an effective ambush predator, there is also evidence to suggest that the mosasaur might have been an intelligent hunter. How intelligent? we don't really know. Most likely nothing to the degree of what we see in whales and dolphins though. However, we do see similar creative hunting strategies. Orcas have been well known to ambush sharks, flipping them over and triggering their catatonic state. Likewise with Mosasaur, we see evidence of creative hunting strategies in the fossils of these creatures. The angle of the bite on these ammonite fossils tells an interesting story. Rather than trying to deliver a killing blow by crushing the tough outer shell, the mosasaur would instead sneak up on these creatures and puncture their outer shell with their sharp teeth. Once punctured, the ammonite's shell would depressurize and the ammonite would fall to the ocean floor, an easy meal for the ocean's top predator. In addition to the creative hunting strategies, the mosasaur also underwent a rare biological change, especially among reptiles. Live birth. Now, you might ask, napkin, what's wrong with eggs? They're delicious. And that's the problem. If you would like your offspring to have a better chance at survival, it's helpful if they're not waiting around for months for an opportunistic predator to decide it's time for an easy meal. Mosasaurs were one of the few examples of reptiles who gave live birth. And because of their size, it's likely the mosasaur would have had a long gestation period. It's been suggested that such a long gestation period might have increased the possibility of the mosasaur being a nurturing parent as is common with other animals who have long pregnancies. We actually have a modern day example of this. In Australia, there's a species of lizard who also gives live birth called the shingleback. These lizards also have a long gestation period leading up to a live birth. Surprisingly, the shingleback lizards seem to possess parental traits, taking care of and nurturing their young. We may never know if the mosasaur also shared those parental instincts. However, it's highly likely that giving live birth would have been a huge survival advantage. Before I move on, I want to mention a recent finding. In 2020, scientists discovered large fossilized eggs inside of Antarctica. These eggs appear to be reptilian and could belong to a marine reptile, possibly a species of mosasaur. While it is possible some species of mosasaur did lay eggs, evidence of live birth can be found in the fossils of Oh boy, um, Carosaurus. We're gonna pretend like that's right. Moving on, 
Carosaurus is one of the early forms of Mosasaur. As of 2022, we have not found evidence of preserved pregnancies from either Mosasaurus or Tylosaurus, two of the largest species of Mosasaur. Wait a minute. Do they just do this to mess with us? Seriously though, their lineage gets really confusing. For the purposes of this video, I'm mainly using the term Mosasaur to refer to Mosasaurus and Tylosaurus, the two most popular species of Mosasaur. But the term Mosasaur encompasses a wide variety of species, all of them classified as Mosasaur. It can all get a little convoluted, so feel free to just use the term Mosasaur. Besides, most people know what you mean. Anyways, where was I again? Oh yes, live birth. At the end of the day, it's highly likely that Mosasaur did in fact give live birth. But stay tuned just in case this whole video gets outdated. The traits Mosasaur took from its reptilian ancestors, as well as new traits it adopted for life in the seas, made it the most effective predator the world has ever seen. The success of Mosasaur can be measured by the abundance of fossils we find all over the planet. In fact, it's likely that the only thing the Mosasaur had to fear was a larger Mosasaur. Several of the Mosasaur fossils we have found have shown severe signs of injury, some of them fatal, with large scars across their foreheads and ribs. While inspecting these injuries, it became evident that the only creature that could have caused these bite marks was a larger Mosasaur. While it's not clear whether or not these injuries came from territorial disputes or from hunting practices, the amount of Mosasaur-related injuries we find on their fossils suggests that interspecies cannibalism was fairly common. It's been suggested that this behavior played a role in their eventual demise. However, it's far more likely that the Mosasaur were victims of the KT extinction, the same catastrophe that wiped out three quarters of all life on this planet, including all non-avian dinosaurs and all species of marine reptiles. Unfortunately, the adaptations that made Mosasaur the greatest predator on this planet would end up becoming a detriment once the planet's resources vanished. Their warm-blooded body and their style of hunting used up a lot of energy. This required the Mosasaur to find frequent meals, meals that became more and more scarce. Without the ability to sustain their endothermic bodies, the Mosasaur eventually went extinct, leaving behind only their bones to tell their stories. But wait a second, how did sharks survive? I'm glad you asked. Sharks are really interesting. You see, oh wait, am I out of time? I guess we'll have to cover sharks in another video. Until then, I want to thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. I look forward to seeing you next time. And don't forget to bring snacks.